Once again, welcome to Adista. Previously, I was discussing the surface plus bond resonance and I have started my discussion with a very uh, simple example of dielectric dielectric interface and at the end of my last lecture, I have raised a quest that what will happen if I replace one of the dielectric material with a metal. And finally, we have seen that the dielectric material is having permittivity or the dielectric constant greater than zero resulting in a refractive index is also greater than zero. On the other hand, and the dielectric constant of uh, a metal depends upon the frequency therefore the refractive index also depends upon the frequency so what will happen if i replace a metal a question can be answered if you know uh, the frequency response of the permittivity of the dielectric constant of a metal and that is the topic for today a dielectric material is modeled by lorange which is known as the lorange oscillator model and a very special case of the lorange oscillator model is the jude model which is applicable for the metal and finally Finally, the dielectric constant for the metal can be represented in this way as shown over there. Clearly, you can see that the dielectric constant for a metal uh, is complex in nature and that's why we can write in terms of the real part and the imaginary part. However, this omega p which is known as the plasma frequency and is having the most interest in this particular topic. The order of the plasma frequency for typical metal is uh, 10 to the power 16 radian per second whereas the uh, plasma frequency uh, takes into account the electron free electron density having of the order of 10 to the power 22 the permittivity of the free space and the me is the effective mass of the electron and q is the charge of the electron this parameter the tau which is the mean free path between two successive collisions because we know that when electron flows through some conducting material they move based on the brownian motions and uh, they collide with each other so the tau represents the average path for an electron between two collisions anyway so it is a very simple algebra with which we can derive the real part as well as the imaginary part now the real part and the imaginary part has a different significance while the electromagnetic wave propagates through metal but observe carefully in the case of the real part of the permittivity we have one minus omega p tau square at the numerator and in the case of uh, imaginary part we have omega p square tau divided by this omega now this omega is a frequency of the incident wave whereas this omega p and tau these two parameters are specific to the particular material we are considering well but looking at this real part and imaginary part of the permittivity we don't have any idea what are the effects this real part and the imaginary part have on the wave while it is propagating through a metal so that's why these two parameters are very less intuitive so we need to derive some more much more intuitive parameters but this universe is immersed within the electromagnetic energy particularly we deal with the different type of electromagnetic frequencies while we are dealing at the circuit level we generally deal uh, with the electromagnetic energy of the frequency of the order of kilohertz or megahertz and beyond that we deal with the uh, microwave signals of the order of uh, gigahertz in this particular case the conductors or the metals cannot be used to carry the po microwave power from one place to other rather hollow metallic tube which are called waveguide are much more suitable for the uh, microwave signals in case of higher frequencies such as light the metallic guide are not suitable so that's why dielectric materials or pure dielectric materials are used as core and cladding while we are constructing some optical fiber cable since the surface plus one resonance is an optical phenomena, we are much more interested to learn the optical properties of the electromagnetic wave. So that's why the intuitive parameters for the optical frequencies are the refractive index. In general, the refractive index is complex in nature, where it has two parts, only the real part and imaginary part. The real part is the ordinary refractive index, which is responsible for the propagation, propagation of the wave. And the ordinary refractive index is that refractive index you have learned during your school level this is a very special case or the much advanced cases we deal with we are dealing with now this imaginary part of the refractive index is called the extension coefficient and which is responsible for loss because as the name is coming is a extinction coefficient so it is responsible for the extinction of the 
electrolytic wave. So these are the intuitive parameters. Now we need to relate these parameters with the material parameter because this is the these are the parameters we have defined for our use but this one is directly related with the core of the material and this is the relation this is one relation where the real part of the permittivity is related with the ordinary refractive index and the extension coefficient and the imaginary part is also related with the ordinary refractive index and the extension coefficient and from these two equation we can easily derive the expression for the ordinary refractive index if the real part and imaginary part of the permittivities are given and similarly the extension coefficient that means the loss can also be derived from these two parts but while we are dealing with the electric signal instead of the electromagnetic wave we are much more interested with the conductivity and conductivity is related to the imaginary part of the dielectric constant or the permittivity because sigma naught is the dc conductivity because if you put omega is equal to zero which is the property of the dc signal means when you connect a dc source dc voltage source with some conducting wire whatever the conductivity that wire will offer you or offer it will offer to the current derived from the dc source that conductivity is sigma naught at omega is equal to zero if you replace the omega naught over here you can get a correlation between the sigma and the imaginary part of the permittivity so basically sigma is derived from the imaginary part of the permittivity although the derivation is beyond the discussion of this course but still by replacing the sigma naught over here you can relate that the imaginary part is related with the conductivity of the material or the metal rather this expression is very well known to you who are studying the electromagnetic wave propagation or the microwave signals yes these type of expressions are used for the people who are dealing with the microwave signals where this alpha and beta they are the part of the propagation constant this is the real part and imaginary part and the real part is responsible for loss and the imaginary part is responsible for the propagation of the wave the people who are dealing with the optical signal there is a direct correlation between this alpha which represents loss in the microwave signals with the extension coefficient which also represents the loss in the case of optical signal similarly beta and the ordinary refractive index they are also related and while you are using the propagation constant gamma as alpha plus j beta while you are dealing with the microwave signals in case of optical signals you have to re replace this gamma by this complex refractive index where the ordinary refractive index is your real part and the imaginary part is the extension coefficient so the main difference is that in case of microwave signal the real part represents the loss but in optical signal real part represents the propagation and the imaginary part for the microwave signal represents the propagation while the imaginary part represents the loss and if you replace this ordinary refractive index this alpha rather this alpha and beta uh, by this expression that I have written over here you will end up with this expression directly and this kind of expression we generally use for optical signals or while we are dealing with the optical devices now let's discuss the ideal metals which is known as the free electron gas because in case of ideal metal we generally consider that the tau or the mean free path between two successive collisions it is infinite because in this case we consider the electrons uh, move like a gas where no two electrons collide with each other and resulting in the collision path mean free path between two collision is infinite so if you put this value over there you will get that the real part of the permittivity will be one minus omega p divided by omega whole square and the imaginary part is zero so finally since the extension coefficient is related with the imaginary part so being this part zero the extension coefficient will be zero and the real part will be directly related with the ordinary refractive index and finally we can write the ordinary refractive index as root over of this and obviously this happens for the case of non-magnetic material because in these cases mu r the uh, relative permeability we generally consider as one now let's plot this now this plot is going to be a very very important over here the x-axis is plotted with a normalized frequency with respect to the plasma frequency and the y-axis is the real part of the permittivity now this this point or this junction is a very crucial point at this point the frequency of the incident wave becomes equals to the plasma frequency of the metal if the incident wave frequency is below the plasma frequency then the incident wave will experience negative permittivity as you can see over here on the other hand if the frequency of the incident wave is greater than the plasma frequency so it will experience the positive permittivity your metal will behave as 
uh, ordinary dielectric material but at this particular point when the frequency of the incident wave is exactly equal to the plasma frequency of the material in that case the incident wave will experience zero permittivity significance is that no transverse wave can propagate through the material or through the metal if the incident wave is having the same frequency as the plasma frequency i will explain it later in much more elaborate way so if the incident wave frequency is less than the plasma frequency or greater than the plasma frequency in both of these two cases this transverse electromagnetic wave can propagate through the material or through the metal if the this frequency is equals to the plasma frequency the incident wave will experience zero permittivity and only longitudinal wave can propagate no transverse wave will propagate through the material i'll explain it later here comes with a greater detail because in this case i'm considering that this tau this parameter is not infinite this is a typical response of the metal for the permittivity when the tau is not infinite so first of all i will consider the sigma so here i will request you to refer the y-axis on the right side which is associated with the sigma and the real part and the imaginary part of the permittivity both of them are associated associated with the y-axis placed on the left side in this case since tau is not infinite this point that means when the real part of the permittivity is crossing the zero line is not exactly at the omega is equals to omega p slightly it is less than omega equals to omega p but that is not going to make a very big difference over there so first of all let's consider the conductivity if the frequency of the incident wave is less than the plasma frequency in that case as the frequency is reducing towards the dc the conductivity value is reaching towards the dc conductivity which is defined by this one and for the frequency greater than the plasma frequency and more value of the plasma frequency the conductivity is going to be zero so representing that the metal is appearing as no loss to the incident signal on the other hand if you observe the real part of the permittivity you can see that below the plasma frequency the real part of the permittivity becomes negative and this is the region where we are going to play with while we are dealing with the surface plasma resonance with the frequency greater than the omega p or the plasma frequency the permittivity becomes greater than zero in this case metal appears as like uh, other dielectric medium to the incident wave and finally for very high frequency the real part of the permittivity reaches to one metals appears like a vacuum now if you look at the imaginary part of the permittivity for a very low frequency the imaginary part is going to infinity as the frequency of the incident wave is reaching towards the plasma frequency and it is crossing the plasma frequency the imaginary part is becomes significant it much more and the metal becomes lossy so if the frequency of the incident wave is greater than the plasma frequency so within this region the metal appears a bit lossy for the incident wave so you can conclude the for the frequency less than the plasma frequency metal behaves like a metal having the real permittivity less than zero or the negative on the other hand if the frequency is greater than the uh, plasma frequency then uh, the metal appears transparent rather weakly absorbing uh, to the incident wave here I have plotted uh, the same thing in terms of the ordinary refractive index and the extension coefficient. As you can see, for the frequency less than the plasma frequency, both of them are going towards infinity so that the electromagnetic wave reflects back from a metal. And already you know such type of phenomena because when an electromagnetic wave incident on particular material plus positive and negative charges, they, they rearrange internally in such a way that they can cancel the incident electric field, which means the incident electric field reflect back when the incidence on metals and that happens because at low frequency the parameters are so extreme that the incident wave gets reflected uh, rather being lost or rather being absorbed so this is the phenomena that happens over there but if you plot the alpha alpha appears as you can see over there and for a very low frequency alpha is alpha is having non-zero value and as the frequency is increasing and it is reaching towards the plasma frequency the loss is also increasing because the extension coefficient becomes significant over there and finally if the frequency is crossing the plasma frequency and it is going beyond much more uh, greater than the plasma frequency the alpha attenuation constant goes to zero and the extension coefficient it also goes to zero and since the extension coefficient and the alpha they 
are correlated so both of them are going to zero on the other hand the ordinary diffective index and the and the real part of the permittivity they are correlated in the last figure you have seen the real part of the permittivity goes to one as the frequency becomes very very greater than the plaza frequency so that's why the ordinary diffective index is also going to one as uh, the frequency is reaching very high value compared to the plasma frequency but one significant thing you should observe this region within this region the refractive index becomes less than one and what is the significance of that according to the definition of the refractive index it is the ratio of speed of light in the free space divided by the speed of light in a particular medium so the speed of light in the free space is always greater than while the wave is within the medium so the refractive index is always greater than one but in this case the refractive index is less than one but what does it mean does it mean that while light incidence on the metal for a particular range of frequency the refractive index becomes less than one which means light can propagate much more faster than the free space within metal and that is a very exciting phenomena because based on this particular phenomena we can use different meta materials and uh, invisible cloaking is discovered on the basis of this particular phenomena so that thing i will discuss later but not right now in this particular video so here's a comparison while we are considering the real part of the permittivity and the imaginary part of the permittivity it means this picture and while we represent the same thing in terms of the ordinary refractive index and the extension coefficient okay so the conclusion is that less than the plasma frequency metal behaves like a metal because the permittivity becomes negative corresponding uh ordinary refractive index is less than one while for the frequency greater than the plus of frequency it uh, the metal becomes transparent to the incident wave and rather it is uh, a bit absorbing because there exists a loss a finite loss with a real part of the permittivity greater than one but in case of ordinary refractive index for certain range in frequencies less than the plus of frequency it remains less than one and up to the very high frequency of the infinite frequency it remains less than one until it is reaching the value 1 which is corresponding to the ordinary refractive index value of the ordinary refractive index well that's all for today in my next lecture i will demonstrate the set of equation that we can form based on a dielectric metal interface and keeping it our mind that for a frequency less than the plus of frequency the permittivity of a metal is negative till then stay tuned with my channel thank you thank you very much